Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. <laughs> yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, Envy. I don't know where the hell Envy at. He's in Charlotte. Yeah, but we got two special guests in the building. My man, Ryan Henry and Don Broomfield. What up, Black what up? Ink Crew Chicago. What's happening? What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's going First on? First and foremost, Don, congratulations to you for becoming a member of the faithful black male community. Right. <laughs> faithful black male community. It was you a long that, time coming. Yeah, you put that whole jersey in the rafters. Yeah. What made you want to evolve, sir? I mean, honestly, man, you uh, you start growing, man. You just start realizing the headaches that you create for yourself. And then you start noticing the energy that people are like exuding from you, man. Like, I was just feeding into, you know, honestly, early, like, I wasn't expecting to ever be on TV. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't expecting to wake up and catch myself a little popular, you know, a little famous, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, honestly, that it was a quick little transition, you know what I'm saying? And I had to just learn, you know, I was kind of killing myself. I was mm -hmm. draining myself and giving myself some negative headaches and, when you look up, man, you got beautiful children and family, you just kind of realize, like, you know, you even draining them with, the, you know, ignorant movements and, and you know, being young and silly, man. So I love to see y'all walk through it, too, like, to work through everything, you know, because yeah. she did stay with you, and yeah, there were times you thought it wasn't going to work out, and she thought it wasn't going to work out. Yeah. But it's nice when she stays and she sees the work that you're putting in. Like, y'all, you didn't even go to Vegas and I think nah. part of that was, of course, you have family obligations, yeah. your son's birthday, but the other part of it was you don't even want to put yourself in a situation. Nah, I don't even want to be in them shoes, yeah, especially with <laughs> these cameras. <laughs> it's, it's like, nah. You don't want to be Van. No, nah. <laughs> nah, that was, he was wilding. <laughs> he was wilding. I was like, nah, I'm good on that, though. And, and just honestly, for me, honestly, ever since a little Snapchat situation, I've been chilling, though, since that stuff happened. How long has that year. been? It's been over a year. Okay, see, I've been, I've been uh, faithful for two years and four months. I cut off all my side chicks two years, four months ago. And your life really does get better. Peace. And what you said is real. Like, you don't want to ruin your family, man. Like, mm -hmm. I saw my father ruin my family because of infidelity. So I didn't want to do that to my family, you know? Well, Ryan's single, so he's out He's Ryan's out still here. Hoeing? You still hoeing, Ryan? Still in the streets? <laughs> no, man. I, just, I ain't single by choice. I got a dump. Um, now, <laughs> trying to, I was trying to get married. It ain't, it well, didn't I, had, work. I had to take my brother on Valentine's dinner last night. You, know what I'm saying? you don't think <laughs> you don't think you could possibly? You don't ever think about the lonely men on Valentine's man, Day, do you? Man. You don't think you could possibly work that out? Uh, I don't know. Probably. You know, I'm not. Um, I'm not against it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't trying to get out here and you know, I ain't dating. No, like I said, I ain't hoeing. Right. You know, so I was on the path to get married. I just had some, you know bumps in the road in my relationship so what happened uh you know what it's still that same bullshit of uh you know you know how it is when y'all just certain stuff y'all just can't forgive you know what i mean um so so you did some dirt and she can't get over it yeah you know what it was it was it's like with the level of being on television um like when it the woman is is embarrassed more you know what i mean mm -hmm. i put her in a position to be more embarrassed than um uh, than, than the, the average, average person, you know <laughs> what I mean? So I'm nationally uh, embarrassed. Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even fuck this girl. It's just that, you know, for it to be, like I say, when you allow for somebody else to be on the level of your woman, that means in the level of respect, then that's worse than anything else that you could do, you know? So I, I prided myself on never letting no other chick ever come to a level of that. And then, like I say, on TV, shit, motherfucker, uh, jump out the boat and t sell a story on your ass, you know? So... It's like that level of embarrassment is just, it is kind of unforgivable. You got everybody in, she got everybody in her mentions. You know what I mean? And it don't stop. So. Shade right. room, ball alert. You know, don't shit stop. don't stop. So. I'm surprised y'all didn't step in and, and say something to Van because on this season. Oh, I did. It's a, um, <laughs> he, so just because I know you might not 100% know what happened, but Van has an a, apprentice that he ended up cheating on his girlfriend with his long-term girlfriend. Mm. And I'm feeling like y'all went through these things. So why not be like, dude, not the move? Now, there's some deleted scenes on VH1 that uh, show me call him stupid about 100 times. And then I actually told her, like, man, get the fuck away from him. Like, you you know what I'm saying? Like, this man got a girl. You know, and but, she was uh, ultimately disrespectful. She told yeah, ooh. his girlfriend that she slept with him the night of her dad's funeral. You, you know. slept with him the night of her dad's funeral. The girlfriend's funeral. She said the night your daddy died at the night of the funeral. Well, the night of the funeral Ooh. for your yeah, dad, I was, was effing your man. Yikes! I, I, that, that, she could have left that little detail out. Yeah, that was just at that point, man. That's what I was talking about. Them people who not on TV. She wasn't leaving. Destroy shit out. you, right? They want that fame. They need that fifteen minutes. Yeah, and that's what we had to realize. Like people, you know, for the fifteen minutes, bro, they'd do whatever, go oh. to the limits, full extent. You know what I'm saying? To sell their story or sell. 
the opportunity to be a part of something we created. You know, what I, I, mean? I don't want to breeze back, breeze past the fact that Ryan is out here being his brother's keeper so much to the point that he told the other woman. Get away from my man. <laughs> Devil be gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's right. what we got to do right. as men to, to protect ourselves yeah. and our peoples, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because yeah. it's like shit. I mean, like I said, I'm already at a loss. I'm not. We out there in Vegas. Shit, like, now I ain't out with my girl. Your girl out here. And she on the way to the damn party. And, you know what I'm saying? This boy, she, they was in a jacuzzi. She hopped in the jacuzzi with him trying to, you know. That's crazy. She was throwing it on him and shit. And I'm just like, man, like, stay the fuck over there. You know what I mean? Like, you ain't, like, mm-hmm. and you stupid because he was, he was drunk. You know what I mean? And at that point, shit, I, can, I ain't good with confrontation, man. My girl ain't walking up on me with no motherfucker <laughs> in my face. So mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm trying to save you the damn pain. Now, Nine Mag might be the only place where you could fight at work and not get fired. Or the set of Black Ink Crew. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I resent that only because, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know how, like I said, I've known you for longer. You know how I feel about my business and, mm-hmm. you know, about my brand. And for what has become on a television show has just been some. You know what I mean? Some garbage shit to to be able to say that. You know what I mean? People walked in my shop from what they see on TV and be like, hey, man, where the drink's at? And it's like, it's a fucking business. Right. You know what wow. I mean? And I'm there mm-hmm. conducting every day. So <clears throat> what's exuded on the show, you know what I mean, is not what's really going on for me, you know what I mean, in the, uh, in the light. So that's why I opened a new shop, uh, which you'll be seeing coming soon. Um, and it's a separation between... You know what is what was done there before and what can go on now. Because you even had that guest tattoo artist, um, what was his name? That came and he was like, "I can't rock with y'all." Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and that, that's literally what it is from that. Like, you know what I mean. I'm really in the tattoo industry, so to be at mm-hmm. a convention of amazing artists and greats, you know what I mean. To be what's respected, you know, these hoes want to fight, which is the utmost dis- disrespectful thing that you can do. In that in that position, you know what I mean. So you make people who want to conduct business be like, "Hey man, we don't want to rock with you like that." You know what I mean. So it built up to a point to where towards the end of the season, you'll see something different coming. And you know what I mean. Like I said, it's, it was time. And don't we you can control the perceptions on TV though? You we can, yeah. We, I control what I can do, <laughs> right. yeah. but you know what, what, what everybody do? else is doing, yeah, what they gotcha. filming. You know what I mean. Like I said, people will do whatever to be on that camera. You know what I mean. So. Mm-hmm. Like, while I'm on camera, I conduct myself very well. You know what I mean? So does this guy. But for what she doing over there, you know what I mean, when it's time to fight or when it's time to turn up or what she thinks she got to do to secure her spot for another season, you know what I mean, which is it's literally like that. And they don't understand that, like, just because these cameras out we're recording for thousands of hours, you get 10 minutes ten of that. Minutes. You're right. And the attention span of the people is even shorter, you know. So mm-hmm. what you just did to diminish yourself and my business in the same sense is worth more than what you're trying to show, you know. So... And they put it out there, and it's like, you know, when it's edited for television, you know, people, that's what cuts to commercials. That's mm-hmm. the stuff that make people tune back in, but, you know, it's tarnishing my brand. Gotcha. Because never forget, Ryan is one of the best tattoo artists. When Thank I first you, met him, he was known for doing tattoos and in Chicago, and I was like, I don't have any tattoos. I was like, if I ever got a tattoo, I would let Ryan do it. If I ever thank got you, one, because he's like always been known for that. And when you first got on, I was like, "Don't act a fool." I did. I hit him <laughs> when I saw you <laughs> doing said, in Chicago. Said, I said, "I hit him." Fool. I said, "Ryan, please don't be acting crazy on TV." But yeah. you know, I understand what you're saying, and so loyalty plays a big part in forgiveness, right? For Absolutely. you, because you're very loyal to your black and crew. You guys are loyal to each other. Yeah. But there's a lot of forgiveness that has to be had for you guys to come back together, because you said you guys are stronger together. That's just maturing. Like uh, being able to recognize uh, what energy to keep around, what energy not to keep in our lives, and then what's willing to forgive. Like we don't want to hold that negative energy with us too long um, because it drains you again, mm-hmm. of course. But we also had to recognize what things came into play that put us in that place. And that's where the, that's where the forgiveness come in at. We had to remind ourselves that this has been six, seven years ago. A lot of these fights probably wouldn't happen, but we had to recognize who everyone is becoming. And uh, I think me and Ryan just had a, this week, when we was in Miami, we was having a big conversation about people about growth and saying, like, this is what we need to do for ourselves to get better. And we so like we, we like five years older than when we started mm-hmm. from this. So, you know, it's like everybody grows and everything ain't going to be the same. You know, I forgive a bunch of people. I don't forget nothing, though. Yeah, and it's got to be weird, too, because a lot of confrontations and stuff probably happen only because the camera's rolling. Absolutely. Yeah. So you don't know what's real and what's not real. Exactly. You know? People be turning up. Oh, people get lost in it, oh, man. man. Like it's it's disgusting, man. People talk <laughs> Superman when the camera's rolling. <laughs> yeah, bro. you be like, man, that's how you feel today. Like we was just cool, but that's that's that part of like we just said, just being able to recognize like, ah, right, either you finna stick around for the long haul, or mm-hmm. we just gonna start, you know, rotating ourselves in other directions. Yeah, now, now is it good for business in the sense of? 
like you more tattoo artists want to come apply just because yeah. they, they may want to be on TV. I don't know. Well, I mean, most definitely. It's uh, like I said, in the like tattooing, it's a it's a visual business, and then right now in the climate of social media, you know, what I mean, it's probably the best way to be uh, promoted and you know network. So to be able to you know be to having a, an entertainment television show shows a little bit of the bullshit, but what I can get through that is, you know, some of the messages about how we really, some South Side dudes from Chicago who conduct business and we didn't stay in the streets and, you know what I mean, there's more that can be done, you know, as opposed to just thinking it's murder, murder, kill, kill all the time, you know what I mean? So to be able to get that message through, to be able to get that, you know what I mean, yeah, we was in the streets, but like, look, I was an artist and I was able to make a business, you know, and now to put that, that visual business out to the world, there's people who tune in, you know what I mean, like I said, visually every day as opposed to just cable now from being in South Africa watching, you know what I mean, like you own year round and all other all other countries of the world and to have that support, you know what I mean, people come from all over the world, like sometimes it's three, four hundred people in my shop just to say what's up when they in town for whatever, you know what I mean, just to come take a part of that from what they support about it, you know, so I mean it's definitely a plus from that uh, expansion, it's just that like I said, you got to take that that grain of salt with it. Mm. You know what I mean? From that that level of reality television, I just hope that they get that little bit that we're trying to push through to it. You know, um, like I said, I mean, we we on this platform to to expand and to show, but like right now, like you can't, like I, said, I can't come out and be everything a hundred percent pro black as I want to sit there and say it on camera. They're gonna cut half of it out. You know what I mean? And even mm. when I do it, it's still gonna get cut out. You know what I mean? So we just sit around and you know do what we got to do. I put out the work and. Uh, and you eventually get to that level where they can't stop you, and then you can, you know, push more. What I do love about Black in Chicago is y'all touch on some really, you touch on some really real life issues, like with your families and everything. Mm. So we see the issues that Four is going through mm. on the show, and he's talking about, and I actually cried when I was watching the episode, I felt so bad, of him struggling with his depression and not wanting to be here and having these suicidal thoughts, and then he went missing. So how is he doing now, and how did he feel when he watched that episode? Uh, my brothers, well, most of us to the point we barely watched the show ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, Damn. So you I mean, not, no, no I'm saying like, no, nah, it's like, no, nah, we do, but you be like, sometimes you don't want to relive certain moments. So mm-hmm. certain moments be too hard for you to go back and watch. That was the stuff. first episode we actually watched together. We was at my shop. We was Man. watching it. Uh, me and Don. You know what I mean? It was tough watching it because it showed it in the real light. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It showed somebody that we love being weak and, um, but what they would you know, some what people would think is weak. You know, even that time we talked to Four right afterward and he hadn't seen it, yes. but he thought at that point, you know what I mean, it was a vulnerable state for him where he was being viewed as weak, but the response of, of the world was that yeah. it was some strength for most people, you know what I mean, in our community or even as black men, some people will act like um, the depression is just the norm, you know what I mean, you should deal with it. Like, especially in Chicago, it's like the things that you deal with, it's like, man, you tough, you get over that. Right. You know what I mean? As opposed to being diagnosed or being um, addressed or even, like I said, he allowed for so many lanes of um, people reaching out to be like, man, I'm dealing with it too. You know, right. by the millions to be able to say, oh, I finally could speak on it because I see you on television, but you're dealing with something real. Oh, I'm dealing with I've been dealing with that. And but then, we yeah. in this era, though, where mental health is being spoken about in our communities, like it's never been like not, this Yeah, ever, not no. never. You know, yeah. people yeah. sending in videos like, hey, man, I was about to go today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I was about to, like, literally saved a life that day and if we can do one you know what I mean then that's what the purpose was for and, and, that, and that, that, even with your family yeah. you talk about the history and yeah. your own family it, it, it's, it's just tough because you know for me um, after we had lost my little sister uh, a couple of years ago to suicide you know uh, Ryan them know like I just I'm real I'm I'm always trying to be an advocate about mental health uh, whether it's depression whether it's you know People who suffer from anxiety, people who suffer from like you know PTSD, my, PTSD all trauma of, from things that happened to you when you was young. Everything, man. You just I think people want to look at where a person at, and they never can really see the wounds underneath. And so you know, me and Ryan have been those people. That's like me. I will stay up till five in the morning on the phone with four. Or mm-hmm. Ryan and do the same thing because I'd rather speak to you all night and you convince to me all day than for you to be here. I tell people all the time I'd give up all of this to hear my sister voice again, be able to talk to her on the phone again. You know that's more important. So. Uh, for my for my brother to uh, have the strength to be vulnerable to let everybody know I, I'm dealing with this, it allowed for everybody to come together support him, which is what he needed. Versus hiding it and like Ryan say, growing up how we grew up, you had to be tough. Mm-hmm. You can't show no weakness. You're you're a black man. You from the hood. You supposed to be like this. And it's like, no, nah, everybody. You know, it's a vulnerable state. It's something real for everybody. And I'm just glad that my brother had the strength mm-hmm. to come forward with it because now it allows us to put in. Uh, and support in places that he needed. You know, he's 
fine with being open and saying he needs to go talk to somebody a little bit more often. And he's cool with calling us and say, y'all, I'm lonely today, man. What y'all on? I want to chill. I want to hang out. I want to come over and see my nieces and nephews. Like, I love that he's doing that now because it allows us to be that support system for him. Yeah, and that conversation going to change the generation because back in the day, you called somebody and said something like that, man, shut you act like a little bitch. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> like, that's really? whack. That's you know what I mean? Brothers need, brothers need people to talk to, too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We, we need to open up and be vulnerable with each other, tell each other what we're going through on a daily basis. You know? That's what right. about you guys? Does that make you reflect on? Because, Ryan, you've been through a lot yourself. You know, uh, Don, you've been through a lot. Does that make you guys reflect and say, well, maybe I need to even seek some help or somebody that I could talk to professionally just because there is a lot of things I'm sure that you haven't completely dealt with. Absolutely. You know, uh, like I said, I mean, a lot of the things that uh, I spoke to Four on when uh, during the episode and even during, uh, you know, in real life is just the fact that like, hey, man, I know what it feels like to be in that position. I shared a story with him, you know, about a situation I had been in that, you know, um, that I recognize now uh, was the position that he was in. You know, you can have all these people around you. And even me, I felt like, you know, even me and his brother, we felt like, hey, man, I've been here with you. But even having that support of somebody right next to you, you can still feel alone at whatever point. And I had felt that before. I know what it was like to feel that way all the way down, you know, when you're at rock bottom. And I think I was, well, I was in my shop, you know what I mean, feeling that same way. And they was outside kicking it, you know what I mean? But it's like, hey, I ain't had nobody to talk to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I understood that when... I've been there with him every step of the way, and he's still able to feel that way. You know what I mean? So um, it's definitely a stepping stone to show people like, hey, man, you do have to have an outlet. You know what I mean? It is about talking to somebody. It is about checking in on your people because, I mean, you never know. You know, look how happy Robin Williams was before, you know, he took his life and nobody would even see that. Right. You know what I mean? Look how, like, who's checking on these strong friends? So, You know, it's funny with mental health, too. Like, it got to be triple for y'all because you know not only you got social media that's mm-hmm. affecting everybody's mental health y'all on reality television yeah. so y'all opening up the opinions of other people every time every an episode time. is how every do y'all how do y'all keep y'all mental health intact like, with that I, I told him like at one point like he seemed like I had to get back into the gym heavy just for meditation for myself and then I even go to a wellness coach mm-hmm. um, who's a good friend of mine on some meditation just that's on great. something else and to be honest with you I know that y'all watch the show but we don't have to take breaks Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it does get tough. The media, your family going through My wife, you know, she was gone for six months with my baby. And that was the realest time of my life. I just took a break from the show. Like, it was hard. And Ryan do the same thing at one point. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you it, you got to have that outlet. I, uh, yeah. I literally wasn't on the show for, you know, a while last year. You know what I mean? And all the things I was going through with that, it's like, you know, I just, if I didn't reset, I'd have been done. You know what I mean? That, that new level of... Uh, of being attacked is something mm-hmm. crazy. Right. You know what I mean, oh, like yeah. people, is... people will think that you know just because yeah. you're at a certain level, you can't be this. Like if you look at somebody like Justin mm-hmm. Bieber who got two million likes and you know eight hundred thousand comments, like Man. it can be worth five hundred million dollars and sitting on the hill in his fifty million dollar house. And now at this level of social media, if he looked at those comments and read through all eight hundred thousand of them, these people have come into your home and mm-hmm. they will yes. affect you mm-hmm. at whatever level you yes. are. And these people are somewhere never to be seen. Right. And you're a human. You're going to receive that negativity yeah. as you receive it if you're looking at it like that. That's you know why it I mean? hurts so, even more when it's your own people absolutely. that was actually yeah. coming at you too because they did the whole F. Oh, yeah, man. Ryan you know? Henry campaign. I absolutely. wasn't there. They did an F Ryan Henry campaign. <laughs> when I uh, I left my shop and uh, you know what I mean the uh, the people that were still there they took it over and you know it was just a whole you know fuck Ryan Henry this that and the other and it's just like even like I said now you'll see moving forward as uh, things have changed uh, like I said I ain't forget shit. You know, so, <laughs> you know, the way but you know jealousy that's all that is. Yeah, I mean, it, it come from that. It come from, you know what I'm saying, being with people who you've worked with that are hurt, you know what I mean? They was hurt, I was hurt, you know what I mean? So I just, I knew at that point I had to uh, I had to retract because while they were saying fuck me, I couldn't say fuck them back, you know what I mean? Because when it was time to move forward, you know what I mean, I didn't want to have nothing to apologize for, but they were just going off the deep end. So, mm-hmm. you know, you got to take that in stride. Now, is Charmaine going to still be a celebrity concierge for you guys? I don't, see, you... I don't see one person she has brought in yet <laughs> that's a celebrity concierge. Yeah. I mean, that... She planned a trip to Vegas. And it look how it went. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I that's don't... a no. No, right. <laughs> You know, I don't I don't think having a, you know, a fight at a convention and, you know, what I mean, a, 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 a mental situ a mental awareness situation on your hands is, you know, a plus for you in that job. So, mm-hmm. 
Sheesh, Ryan. Now, I want to ask you this about Jesse Smollett, because this all happened in Chicago. Have you guys been following this story? Hey, man, I just seen some this morning. What? what? Oh, I want to some... ask y'all, because you guys are in Chicago, so I don't know if it's different. Like, Well, I mean, it what, wasn't like it was no... What you know, people are saying. It wasn't a black person in Chicago. It was, you know, it was seen as a, as a hate crime, as mm-hmm. somebody who was, you know... Uh, predominantly white and you know they acted like he definitely had a, a a red hat on as he was doing it I don't know how you know how it went over but I mean for anybody in in that community you know what I mean like no hate crime is is supported at all you mm-hmm. know what I mean so everybody to see everybody support him was amazing you do know, things uh, like that happen in Chicago a lot yeah hate crime I haven't I haven't seen it because like we literally have a uh, like we have a boys town and you know what I mean yeah. you can't go up there and disrespect nobody like it ain't you know what I mean like it's nothing right. like that you have your select few people but who would do you know what I mean these heinous crimes but uh, it's nothing like that like it ain't just like like shit they'll probably fuck you up up there mm-hmm. you yeah know what Chicago mean? So, ain't no like when I hate people so, this is MAGA country I'm like I, I don't mm-hmm. I don't stri- strike me as as not in, not in, in Chicago, Chicago. Yeah. shit. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Like it don't like we ran Trump up out of there when they had that, <laughs> uh-huh. uh, that just the um, the campaign. You know what I mean? Before presidency, so you and, know what I mean. And and what's, and, what's what's not seen about Chicago is which is bad, but in a good in the way. It's kind of like that was advocate. Like we got to segregate the type of city. Like if, if you don't want to if you don't want to be around a certain group of individuals, you don't just have don't to there. be because right. the city is so separated. So if a person. If you literally went up to do a hate crime, like you went over there with the intentions of being negative, like yeah. you had the intentions of like starting something, because like everybody, you know, you got we got so many different clubs and environments that everybody's free to be themselves. You know what I mean? So you you had to have those negative energy, that intention of you know being in that area to start something. Mm-hmm. You know. My now, biggest. what about the word bitch? Because on the last episode, this fight broke out because <laughs> of the side bitch <laughs> comment. That was made. Yeah. Is calling another guy or using the word bitch to another guy, is that grounds to start a fight? Is that the yeah, ultimate I mean, disrespect? If you if I call you a bitch, I'm trying to do something to right. you. You know what I mean? And for me personally, like I said, I don't like it's people who do that, I don't play with the word like that. I don't play with it with my friends. You know what I mean? Like my daddy can't call me no bitch. Like I don't I don't play with that word. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's just it's full level of disrespect. I'm not if some people sit around and be like, Oh man, you bitch ass nigga. I don't even play like that. No, right. It's not even to be played. Why yeah, would I disrespect yeah. you in that sense? I could have thought of something else. Right. You know, so that's how I feel about suck my dick. Yeah, yeah that's, it's, it's, it's definitely, just, it's just, it's definitely right, right, tough right, like yeah, that. It's so, just, it's super. and people play like that. It's just like I don't play like that. So you know, what I mean, when uh, people saw uh, my homie Junior call him a bitch, I mean, shit, he know why he said that. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, and if he ran up on Junior after that, like shit, Junior had to be prepared for that shit, which he was. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, I didn't call him no bitch. You know what I'm saying? But he just changed it all the way up, and that's what he did. And like, yeah, man, that shit harsh. Huh? Man, I, my boy, he he knew why. He, well, you know, I knew, I knew why he said it. <laughs> why did he say it? I mean, at that point, it was a. It's you yeah, know he what was, I'm saying. It was a lot going on that, he like was you know, they have to chop. See, like, he was okay. digging, yeah, a lot that, like, in that second why he was there, and I get it. First time on TV in a room full of guys, he won't want to seem like he. A punk, yeah, he was acting but, very like it was being. It, but too... I think like like I, I tell people all the time, like man, uh, real to recognize real. You walk into a room, be yourself. Right you know up. what I'm saying? Be mature. Mugs gonna people gonna gravitate to you. They can tell if you we tell if you're a goofy or not. Just be yourself. I mm-hmm. think he was trying so hard to prove mm-hmm. he was wasn't a goofy. That he probably he, was like, I don't want to be on TV looking soft. Yeah, exactly. But then, we yeah, was going. We was joking with him most of the time. That's the thing. Like, wasn't nobody getting at him bogus like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like, that's like, but well, you can't be a man walking. You trying to. These be the guys that stay in the car when you picking up the woman. You won't go in and talk <laughs> to her father <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? It's like, no, man. Like, I'm gonna make sure that the respect is everywhere. You know, mm-hmm. you gonna respect me as a man even when I was 17 years old to go talk to you, let you know where your daughter going with me. So you the type of walk in and you just want to be, you know what I mean, on some bullshit. It's like, no, man, you could walk in the room. You scared to walk in the room full of men? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Shit, what happen if you get locked up or something? Like, you, that shit don't work. You know what I right. mean? So, you know, at that point, it's just like, hey, man, it could have went so smoothly or, you know, you could have been on that and that shit get you fucked up. And I'm telling you, man, social media is making everybody socially awkward. Cause they so used to talking to people like that on mm-hmm. social media, yeah, and they look. don't know how to interact with <laughs> people in person. <laughs> you know, like yeah, you're really sending out a tweet. You right, know what I mean? Right. Like you in a room with somebody, bitch ass nigga. Whoa, <laughs> what? Mm. You ain't on your computer right, right. now, bro. bro. Man, we face to face, bro. Like man, we, you know, what's uh, you know, every action got a reaction, man. Yeah. That's what that was. Now, Ryan, people were excited that you had your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> to I don't, fight like, on this last episode, try- Bossip did a whole article about it. Yeah, yeah, I seen it yesterday. <laughs> I posted about it. I appreciate it. Now, I was, so that's what I was telling them. I'm like, um, you know, Uh-oh. so just being in my position, like I said, you know, with, um, 
me how I am, I'm a provider and I'm a protector, you know, especially when it comes to to women. Uh, there were women in the shop. And regardless of what they went over there to say to him, his mouth was already bleeding and he spit blood in her face. Right. Mm-hmm. So Ooh. when he did that, like, man, you know, my sister been killed by a bitch ass nigga. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? At that point of a woman being in harm, I was just at red. You know what I mean? So for some reason, I thought, all right, this blood, let me not get it on my white sweater as if my skin was better to get it on. <laughs> So, you know, I, that's why I you took a shirt off. You want to get blood could, on your sweater? He's he like, he ain't getting his blood Because you look, like, after, you, after you fight, after you fight, and then it's blood all on your sheet, you look crazy. You know what I mean? Especially if you got a white tee on. So, um, that's yeah, that's what, the, I don't know why. I was just like, let me take this shit off. And then I just, we, had watched, been in, we had been in the gym like crazy for those those couple months. So, you yeah, know, watch any you. episode of us, <laughs> like anything we do, like women get in touch, their space is what we don't play. Right. Yeah. Point blank period. We were so. getting some backlash well, from people like, oh man, y'all jumped him, y'all this. It's like, so, when he first ran so. up on Junior, that was a one on one. We mean? were sitting there laughing. When we you spit this we blood in these women's face, everybody in here can fuck you That's up. That's right. You know what I mean? All systems and go when the women are involved. That's right. You know what I mean? If I'm messing with you and I put my hands on you, if your father, his, your brother, and your uncle come to fuck me up, they not wrong. Right. That's right. You know what I mean? You gotta so take that out. At that point, once the woman is in danger, all of us can fuck you up. I mean, that's how I look at it. Like, if you say we jumped and whatever, I'll do it all over again. I swear disrespect to God. I told him, I talked to him, and I told him, like, hey, man, I didn't want that harm to come to you. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm sorry that it had to happen to you, but you knew you was in the wrong. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? When it came to the women, like, I apologize afterward, but you had to get fucked up right there. Right. Is he understanding? Was he like- Yeah, he was understanding of it. He knew what it was, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, and he knew what, like I said, a, a man, I know where his mistakes are in that, in that sense, especially when a woman is involved. Very teachable moment. That's what it was. You know what I'm right. saying? That's That's what it was. Had to knock your tooth out, but That's you learned. I mean, it's, it's just one of the moments. Like, and the bad part is, like, at that point, and um, we had given him like a few warnings, and then we was even allowing him, like, man, go on, dip up out of here, bro. Like, no, nah, I'm still on that. I'm doing. It. He was at that point. He didn't want to see. He was like, see on, blood, he was, on blood, on blood, on blood. I'm on this, and we like, man, just let him slide off. And then at that point, when you, you know, what I mean, I, I'd have seen if he had seen Junior again, got on that with Junior, but I know it's a female at that point. Mm-hmm. She not even your target, like so. It was like it was no reason to even Do that go that hard to her. So, I mean, I know they'd be like, you we know, was fully chilling till the woman got involved. Yeah. Do you feel like the crew is stronger now? I think. Yeah, you know what? Uh, <laughs> for the basis of the people <laughs> yeah. who uh, originally started, we are. You know what I mean? But uh, I mean, it's other entities that's included into that. You know what I mean? People mm-hmm. have come into the show. Uh, they've been staying, and um, you know, they calls riffraff. You know, so uh, as a whole unit for the cast. Um, it's not as strong, you know what I mean? Like, egos are involved now, you know what I mean? People are five seasons in on the number one successful show, they feel away, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So some people can't be talked to, some people can't be told nothing. Some people feel like, man, you know, man, that superstar shit is crazy. So um, at that point, it's like, all right, let me just stick back with my originals, you know what I mean? And then we'll see what else happened with everybody else, if you can last. Mm. But, you know what I mean, one thing is this, like, if you've seen even in that, uh, the episode, one thing is this, like, man, we're going to ride for each other, you know, regardless. Whatever right. the situation, we're going to have always have each other back. Um, my brother to the end, we can fight right now, and somebody <laughs> run up on the street, it's just, it is what it's going to be, you know what I mean? And it, it's We're coming together and learning the process, and I think, you know, I'm proud of my brother Ryan for doing his research on what we need to do to be fully successful during uh, while having this experience and then after. The right. whole point is learning the longevity of utilizing this platform so that we all are able to look back on it and say, at least we didn't go through all that bullshit and nothing came out of it at the end. So I'm proud of him for like helping leading that way on, you know what I'm saying, us getting to that point of financial freedom. All right. You know? and I mean, you just opened up another shop, so you... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, just opened a new shop on, uh, actually on uh, 5th of January, uh, you know, so, and it's separate from... The show, you know what I mean? Like, it's all in my hands. Um, I've got 15 artists in there, you know what I mean? So I, I've got four administrators. i got a, a crew of people of almost 20 that I'm dealing with every day uh, to actually conduct this business, you know what I mean? I, I work harder than most people that I know, but I still didn't put myself in the level of uh, having that passive income be what it was supposed to be. So, you know what I mean? Just learning from uh, the experiences of, yeah, we started the show as a family and you know what I mean? It was friends and all that stuff, but that don't work with business. You know what I mean? And you saw it crumble from within because of what it was, you know. Uh, so I had to step away and then rethink how business needed to go, you know, and uh, put ourselves in positions to be better. You know what I mean? We got more shops coming, you know. Uh, me and Don are working on some other things. You know what I mean? Just going into so many different lanes of uh, investment. I, I like... 
taking my kids to school in the morning, going to work for a little bit, and then being with them once I pick them up for the rest of the day. Damn that's right. You know, that's so, the life. Greatest <laughs> villain. You know. Greatest villain. Well, salute to you, Ryan and Don, man. I love thank what y'all stand for, man. Thank you. Yeah, thank Don, you. no more uh, naked videos or nothing? No, nah, man. I'm I'm cooling, man. I don't even, <laughs> I'm good. Like, I, I, I swear, like, it just take a moment, man. It's just like it hits you like a light bulb, but sometimes it takes the worst things in life to happen for you to realize, like, you know, you just gotta change, or you just gonna be in a, like a downward spiral. It's just not gonna help you. You know what I mean? A lot of these things ain't helpful, man. And like I said in the beginning, people, a lot of people are, are, are out here to drain you uh, for what you got, and they don't mind destroying everything you got as long as they get something from it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just to that place where I have to protect my family. That's right. the first thing I am: a, a husband, father, a son, you know, a brother. To be, in order to protect my people, I gotta be on point yeah, at right. all times. That's dope. That's a nice and learning don't experience. don't relapse, man. Stay as part of the faithful black male community. <laughs> I'm, hey. I, I enjoy I enjoy arguing about who picking up the kids today, bro. Or who got I braces. Who got, <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, who cooking at night. That's cool. You know, I'm cool with them arguments, man. All the other stuff for the birds. And I know you feel responsible for your dad now, too, and it's nice for oh, him man. to be in that loving environment with the family. Man, uh, it, it's real because, like, uh, my dad has always been, like, a strong man to me, like, I was that kid who literally saw his dad as Superman. I felt like my daddy can beat anybody dad up. Like that's, I love my dad, man. And um, for him to be going through what he's going through, through the losses we took, he lost his mother. Uh, first he lost my uncle, my uncle Daryl, and then my grandmother passed through grieving over losing her son. So for my dad to lose, you know, some of the most important people in his life, like back to back, like months apart, Damn. it was. it's just like he never just kind of bounced back from it. And he felt, almost responsible and sometimes that's how people are we feel responsible for our people and it take a long time for us to heal from it and that's just where my dad he had a healing point and I just want to see him be great and be around for his grandkids teach them the things he's taught me and, and be a part you know just be around he loved these guys mm -hmm. he loved me my daddy is they tell you, my daddy is like a life of a part of me he'll come in kick it crack jokes he's a great person and it's just tough like I'm just glad my dad is able to admit to me too like man son I'm, I'm going through it and I need you so I'm fine being there for him. I'm fine being there for anybody at this point in my life. So season six on the way? Immediately. Immediately. <laughs> we uh we'll be done with five in about, you know, a few weeks and we go right you know, like I said, it's a it's a blessing to be in the position. Like I said, when people see it, they're like, Oh, this is reality TV, all oh, this, this is like, man, we from Chicago, like don't shit pop where we at, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. now to be number one consistently, you know, we did number one every episode last year you know what i mean the same before that if not we number two to sports center or some or nba game uh to do that now and then to be in such high demand for people to support it because i've seen people who you know me talking about actors for 20 years they come out with a show and then they get canceled mid-season mm -hmm. you know what i mean and y'all do this this is what y'all do and for people to relate to us who they wouldn't know uh outside of this you know what i mean we're just giving them us and to be here continually like we going into a season where, you know, between us and Caesar in New York, we on 52 weeks a year. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's in demand like that when TV is changing, you know, and uh, people are still just rocking with you for what you put out. So, yeah. Right. So like when it. does it come on to? Uh, Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wednesdays. I know you're too busy, man. I be trying, man. It's a lot you of gotta really you can binge watch on demand. I can't do it. So I, yeah, when you said season saying. five, I'm like, yo, they on, it about to be on season six. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. Hey, God, damn. Time flies, Brian man. got head now. Brains <laughs> 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 up. Yeah, yeah. But Wednesday VH1. What time? Uh, nine eight nine, central. Yeah. Nine eight central. Right, and this season has been amazing. So I just want to say congratulations to y'all. Thank, thank you, you thank so much. You. Appreciate that. Well, it's Black Ink Crew, Chicago, Ryan Henry, and Don Broomfield. Thank you for coming, bro. No problem. Thank y'all. Thank you, bro. 